Hi guys, I'm back. Um, my name is Marlon Menaga. I'm the marine biologist and the dive center manager here at Magic Oceans, Philippines Magic Oceans Dive Resort, Andabohol, Philippines. Um, so today we are going to talk about the logo, the seahorse. So this is Seahorse General. Um, so I'll be talking about the Crush Course Seahorse Lecture, okay? So this is not so um, um, detailed, but I think I can still add knowledge, a little bit of knowledge to you guys. So um, seahorses are quite nice, especially if you go to Anda. Um, we have specific type of seahorse here, the um, Bargibanti seahorse. Uh, sometimes you can see um, uh, the Denisi, but not so recently. All right. So um, when mommy is daddy, this is a very interesting uh, topic, especially for the seahorses. Um, not only seahorses now, but you also have like sea dragons. Well, we don't have sea dragons here, but I'm going to talk about that one also. Um, here at Magic Oceans, you can find seahorses and pipe fishes. So many seahorses and many pipe fishes. This is 100% guaranteed. Cool. So let's proceed about our lecture about the seahorses. Horses, the dragons, and the pipe fish. Um, so they are considered to be the mystic critters. So let's talk about the significant characteristics and um, about the seahorses. So distinguishing traits, guys. Okay. So there are around 54 species of seahorses, around 200 species of pipe fishes, two species of sea dragons. Sea dragons can be found in like Australia, while the seahorses and the pipe fishes mostly found in the tropics here in the Philippines were very um, grateful, especially here at Magic Oceans Dive Resort Anda. I was still pristine, the sandy bottom, the gorgonians, soft corals, almost um, we have it here, okay? Um, the sizes for the seahorse can reach to 34 centimeters, even one centimeter or less than that, like millimeters. Um, we also have like the pipe fish, 10 centimeters to around 31 centimeters. The sea dragons can reach to 24 centimeters. Um, they are considered to be carnivorous animals, 30 times to 50 times per day eating, okay? And they can consume plus and minus, this is around 3,000 brine daily. Like babies, guys, considered to be eating a lot, you know, not even adult. Um, so seahorses also, if you see them, um, they may look like they have ribs, like us guys, like humans, you know? At the side of the horse, you can see it there um, on my arrow here, they are not ribs. They don't have ribs and they don't have scales also. Instead, they do have these like body plates. It comes to be like rings all over their body that may look like rib, right? Um, Seahorses can change coloration um, depending on the environment, depending on, on what type of um, surroundings they are at, they change their coloration also. So the average average lifespan in the wild is estimated to be one to five years. Um, well, like seahorses, pipe fishes, and the sea dragons also. It's inclusion of that one. And they are highly poor swimmers. So 30 to 70 times they're so thin beating only for them in order for them to, to be stable enough, enough. Okay. And mostly these three species live in the shallow waters. Um, the seahorse, the pygmies, um, they can live like a deeper part of the ocean while their host also lives there, but not so deep. The shallow can be like 30 meters, kind of like that. Okay, this is like one meter to around 28, 30 meters. So seahorses guys, they don't have teeth and they don't have stomach. So how are they going to feed guys? 
So they do have siphon. So the siphon is like a straw. That's their mouth. And they must eat almost constantly to stay alive because, again, they don't have this one. They don't have stomach and they don't have teeth to grind. Okay, so whatever is going inside, it will definitely go outside also. So where to spot seahorses, the pipefish, and the sea dragons? Best to spot. These animals, especially this one, this is our, our, our um, animal, the flagship of the Magic Ocean's logo. So they, this is Hippocampus bargibanti. They're very beautiful animals, okay? Um, mostly we can find seahorses in the seagrass meadows. We can find in the weedy environment that they try to perfectly camouflage in because again, they are changing their coloration. They can change their colors. Um, we can also find a lot of like seahorses, the bigger ones in the mangrove forest, in the mangrove ecosystem and the coral reefs. So it's a complete marine ecosystem. We can find the seagrass, in the mangrove, in the weedy environment, seaweeds, and also in the coral reef, both soft and hard corals, which is really cool, right? So speaking of anatomy of seahorses, so this is actually the animated, just the drawing for you guys to be alive. <laughs> Um, so this is not the actual seahorse, but it's just like a drawing. Might be uh, funny for you guys, but definitely seahorse, they do have eyes. They do have snout. So the snout, guys, this is like a straw. So they don't have, again, teeth. They do have fins, you have pectoral fin. You have dorsal fin. You have anal fin, okay? They do have gill cover. So the gill cover is uh, here. Is a... Um, where the gills are located. So this is exchange of uh, gases. They breathe. They have this fin here, fin here, fin also here, the anal fin, and they have broad pouch, only for males. So for females, they don't have that one. And uh, why males have broad pouch? Because again, as earlier on the first slide, when daddy, is a mummy. <laughs> so that's for the seahorses, guys. And seahorses, they have this prehensile tail. So the prehensile tail can just like hold on to things like uh, corals, gorgonians, and the seaweeds, and the sponge, anything that they can hold on to for them not to be carried away because they are strongly poor swimmers, right? So that's for the seahorses. And the other one is the, um, uh, the pipefish. So the pipefish, this one is a ghost pipefish. This is not a true pipefish. So the ghost pipefish, in the contrast to the, the, the true um, pipefish and the seahorse that the males are actually uh, brooding the, their babies, the ghost pipefish is actually the female is the one who is like um, pregnant, not the male, okay? It's like a normal one. So this one is a pipefish. It's very common in the coral reef area. This is Halimida ghost pipefish. The Halimida ghost pipefish comes its name um, from the Halimida algae. It looks like that, like a leaf, okay? We also have like a lot of robust pipefish here in Anda. And we have a lot of like pie fish like that. Um, even this one, it's called a mushroom pie fish. We have plenty of mushroom pie fish here. Uh, different kind of pie fish, different kind of like seahorses also here in Nanda. What we don't have here is um, this one, but I am still include, I still include this one because it's part of the family, the Signatidae family. So this is the sea dragons that you can find in Australia. Very beautiful, very good. I want to see this one in actual, but I hope so I can find this one soon. So that's also their basic anatomy. They do have similarities to the snout and everything. Aside from this one, they do have like a weed appearance that helps them to be perfectly camouflage. okay? So reproduction, again, is very important for any animals also in plants, also with us, well, for us. 
So for the um, um, seahorses, they have this greeting dance. So the greeting dance, this is a long courtship, guys. It's three to seven days. Every morning, they are, they are like lovers in paradise. That they their their tails can be like intertwined and they hold on together just to confirm their bond. Okay. So so I imagine if like two horses all together, when you have like the prehensile tail, they just like intertwine, hold on to their each other, and then dancing. That's that's their greeting dance. And this is just to confirm their bonding that they're still together, right? So okay, so let's move on. Um, so sexual maturity for the seahorses can be like until, uh, sexually fully matured or is around six months. Then, um, they have these greeting dances. That's what I told you earlier. I mentioned earlier. So during reproduction also, the males, they are the one who will brood their, um, their, their, babies so the real pregnancy most males and the season for that one is during spring and summer okay seasons for for season for breeding um in contrast to the ghost pipe fish it will be the female who will will do the pregnancy right just to make it clear so they have like supporting supporting veins they even have placental fluid salt water and it's like gradual um, the fertilized eggs for smaller species of um, these animals could be like around 50 to 150 uh, individuals. Eggs um, in larger species, because they're kind of like larger, they can have their eggs like around 1,500 eggs. Okay, it's a lot. If you compare it to the smaller ones, they have uh, smaller numbers also. So the incubation period is between two to six weeks um, <clears throat> and the labor will take place into like 12 hours it depends on the species guys the labors it will take 12 hours but depending on the species it could be like two to six weeks also depending on the temperature so the colder the temperature will be the, the longer it will be um, the the hot or the warm water it will be shorter also okay so pregnant dad, I like I like the dad being pregnant, but not us humans. Okay, so this is the seahorse. You can see the the pouch here, kind of like big and swollen. Um, the pipefish. This is the banded pipefish. The ring banded pipefish. You can see the eggs here. Okay, pretty visible. The weedy sea dragon. You can see also the eggs here. Also visible. Even this one is a really big picture. This is thank you for the National Geographic picture. Only for education purposes. And um, the, we call it the fry, the babies. So the babies, guys, once they hatch, it will be like a small miniature or the, the, the small um, seahorse, the small adult. You, know? you can see it here, plenty. But um, it will also be in pl planktonic stage, they will drift like two to three weeks before they settle down. It's sad to say the reality is one is to adulthood, one is to 1,000. The adulthood, this is the ratio for the survivability, okay? Mortality is higher because there are a lot of like predators also underwater that are feeding on them. Um, there is no parental care once they hatch, just let it like that, majority of, it, of them. So there are natural threats for the uh, seahorses. So you can see it here, you can see the, the plates, the rings, the bony plates and rings. So they are considered to be the threatened species, others considered to be like, um, a, they call it like endangered species. The threats because of the habitat loss, um, one example, the, the mangrove area, the mangrove deforestation, the seagrass also losing, converted into a lot of like stuff like um, um, buildings, hotels, pollution, water pollution, mainly 
you have the climate change, global warming right now, can alter the temperature underwater. Overfishing, the overfishing is the way they, they, they um, uh, how do you say, the way they catch fish, especially if they use the um, uh, fishing nets. It's not so good, especially in the shallow area where you can catch a lot of um, seahorses. Poaching is uh, very common and uh, very famous here for their threats. Um, so it could be for because of the traditional Chinese medicine trade, but I'm not saying that the Chinese are, all of the Chinese are poaching because uh, seahorse because of this one, but um, it is well known. Uh, we also have the curio trade. And we also have the pet trade, especially for the um, aquarium trade, all right? Um, the code of conduct. So you guys probably you are um, more into like macro photography. Um, let's say like in general, the underwater photographers, the underwater photography stuff. Um, we have code of conduct. So us, because of here at Magic Oceans, we have plenty of Bargy Bandy Seahorse. We can, have, we, can, uh, we can show you 100% all that. So it was like two months ago, I saw in one sea fan, 20 plus sea horses. So 20 plus bargy banty sea horses. It's just right there, amazing. And we have pictures of that one. We, we, we have um, a lot of like underwater photographers uh, coming from inside Bohol. They took uh, good pictures of our bargy banty sea horse. Okay, so what are those, uh, the code of conduct? So the code of conduct, guys, it goes like this. <clears throat> so, so for example, you have your um, sticks, you know, underwater sticks. If, even if your hand, you keep on pointing on them. So stop pointing uh, or poke the, the seahorses because make them stress. So we try to avoid stress. So keep distance also, guys. Um, if you have like your camera with you, avoid also very uh, bright lighting, especially for the video light. You have like 2,000 plus lumens, 5,000 lumens, even more. Um, it's very hot for them. There are uh, reasons why, why they live in a certain depth. Uh, they try to avoid very hot conditions also, especially for our Bargy Banty Seahorse, um, the, the Pygmy Seahorse. Okay, so try to do also the, uh, what we call is the good buoyancy stuff. It's not so good if you don't have a really good buoyancy underwater. Um, and then just limit your shots, like three to five shots. You have your strobes to do, you can just like uh, minimize the amount of light also. And during night dive, um, definitely try to avoid kind of like here on this picture is like close because um, during night dive they are actually actually feeding also right so a lot of like animals underwater during nighttime they sleep and they 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 also do they also do that and if you're there just making your lights on it makes them stress also so and and in general in general guys um we try to avoid the animal being stressed. Um, the, the pygmy seahorses here, our, our Bergibanti seahorse here in Anda, uh, we can find starting at 10 meters. That's very shallow and can go down to around 28 meters. So specific on a specific type of uh, sea fan, okay? Um, yeah. I may say just be a responsible diver. That's it, something like that. So moving on, yeah, we try to avoid also overcrowding. So one at a time, guys. If you if your dive master is very good, um, one at a time. So if you have, if you if you are around like four or five individuals, one at a time, not overcrowding. Okay. We have like five photo limit, at least five shots. I can, can also guarantee three shots at least. Okay. So 
the seahorses they are known as monogamous is it true so actually guys actually guys uh, before they are thought to be monogamous so one um, life partner so if the female or male dies the other one will die also it's like useless but that's definitely not the thing um, there are plenty of seahorses that has not been uh, uh, being not being studied. Um, there is, I think, one only one species, a few species of seahorses that are known to be like that, but not all. Um, in fact, uh, there are a lot of uh, plenty of studies also um, regarding seahorses that the other one was uh, not there anymore, especially during like breeding season. So if the, if the male is there, um, the female is not there, or the male, the other way around, um, they can also do like another one. So it's good for conservation efforts for the seahorses because um, if the other one is died, probably the other one will, we can now have the chance to, to do the mating. So again, they do it like the greeting dance to confirm their bonds. So similar, but actually, unfortunately, in reality, um, seahorses are not monogamous, okay? So probably us people are monogamous. I can consider myself monogamous also. <laughs> so just to recap, guys, this, um, um, this photo here is our Bergy at Magic Oceans uh, Resort. This is our flagship logo. So... Carnivorous animals, they are carnivorous fish. They eat a lot of like um, small planktonic animals. Um, they all have, they have no scales. Instead, they have these skeleton rings. They don't have ribs either. Um, they have this daily greeting dance to confirm their bond. Um, in reality, with the seahorses, pipefish, uh, males bear young. Um, in contrast with uh, the ghost pipe fish, this one, the sign, <laughs> um, the female baryon, they have this excessive pregnancy. They don't have stomach. They don't have even teeth to grind, to chew. And they feed almost continuously in order for them to, to be alive, okay? And they're very delicate. Um, fish species so they're also threatened because of a lot of like um, threatened because of a lot of uh, illegal way of fishing damaging to them especially poaching okay so I may say thank you um, for watching and listening to our seahorse um, please support Magic Oceans Dive Resort um, come here when the borders will be open and we can guarantee you to see this kind of like animals. Again, please remember to have our five photo conduct of the seahorses, especially for our pygmies. Okay. Um, we have a lot of places here in our mock diving area that we can find seahorse like this. Length, size of the seahorses. Well, the others, it's like the fingertip very tiny ones all right so continue following us on our social media accounts um, magic oceans dive resort fb or facebook page we also have our instagram page magic oceans dive resort um, you can also contact us there we have um uh, covid promo right now uh, but when the borders will be open, we are we can uh, have you back here and we can dive together for more diving adventures. Okay, so once again, this is Marlon, guys. So thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and have a good day. Bye bye.